Let's start just with the, the definition. If you've got high discipline, your world needs to be predictable. And when it's not, no no fear, you, you make it that way. Um, it's about order and, and structure and, and planning. People with high discipline instinctively impose structure on their own world. They do that by setting up routines, maybe even by setting up timelines or, or deadlines. Uh, a, a couple other of uh, the powerful sentences that I find in this definition, which by the way is at the top of the companion guide, you break long-term projects into a series of specific short short-term plans and work through each of those plans diligently. So discipline is an executing theme. It really is about, um, I think, finding a groove that works and following it. I got a, there was a question on our Facebook page recently about what's the difference between discipline and consistency. And I think that's a super fair question. In fact, I had to sort of pause and think about it myself. Consistency is about fairness. It's about, um, it, there's some predictability in both of them, but I think the predictability of consistency comes from an external comparison of how do I want my systems to all work together or how do I want my people to all be treated the same? And with discipline, it is more about that internal, how do I want to follow the cleanest, most orderly way of getting things done? So I think people with high discipline um, think about accomplishing quite a bit by doing it in, in the most effective way. So if you've got high discipline, um, think about what is maybe the leadership extension of that. If you are thinking about running your own life um, and you're, you're just using discipline as an individual contributor, you probably are thinking about clear processes. Um, perhaps if you've got high discipline and you're a leader, you're not only thinking of those clear processes, but you're also thinking about a clear purpose. So one of the, the tasks that leaders or, or managers need to be able to do really well is help people understand where we're going. That's how you get followers. And it's hard to be a leader if you don't have followers. So I think discipline can be a really great muscle to flex in helping people truly understand in a clean, structure, organized, detailed way, what does, what does the goal look like? So think about talking about what are we measuring? What does success look like? And don't uh, assume that anybody else ever is going to notice the amount of detail that you are. Instead, realize that that's something within you that is true and powerful and valuable. And your eye for detail is something that if we can, if we can wrap that into your communication of what's expected, I think it creates a, a great uh, runway that your followers can really take off on. I also think about a leader with high discipline being able to serve as a referee for relevance. Um, I have no discipline and it's 30 something for me. Um, and I do have high communication, high ideation, which very often means ideas escape my mouth before my brain has vetted them. And so <laughs> in many ways, I'm the opposite of discipline. I think, in fact, statistically, discipline and ideation are the least likely to show up together. So in many cases, that sort of the opposite of discipline can be just this openness to possibility. Ideation, or, or my ideation, is a welcome and embrace of any new ideas. What I love about discipline and my partners with high discipline is they can serve as a crossing guard for all those ideas that I'm throwing at them. And what they can do is they can compare any new information, any new ideas, maybe even new members to the team. And they can say, okay, how does anything new fit the plan that we've already got in place? And I think uh, that's probably a great mature version of what discipline can look like in a leader. Um, maybe the raw state of that or, or the, maybe the knee-jerk reaction without some investment is just to get frustrated and say, gosh, Micah, you're, you're going off the rails here. But I think discipline has a, a, good, a, a really good relationship with the rails. So you can be a steward of the process and help people sort to when we need to be creative and when it's not going to be meaningful or relevant. And that's a beautiful gift that, um, that, that discipline can offer is that insight into how do departures from our structure benefit us and then maybe how do they not. So I, I also think when you, uh, if you're coaching leaders with discipline, I would encourage them not to hesitate anytime they feel that urge to check in with people. 
Um, great leaders, great managers set the expectation and then get out of people's way. But for people with discipline, their interaction might be some of those check-ins. The way that they show compassion and hope might be by, the, by some of those check-ins. And trying to turn that off, um, I think is going to be probably kind of counterproductive. Instead, check in as soon as you feel that urge uh, and tell people ahead of time what you're going to that you're going to check in. Uh, trying to fight it isn't going to work very well. Uh, so just do it and, and maybe explain the discipline before it explains you. Think about saying things like, hey, how can I help you? Or how's this structure working for you? Or helping people talk through their process and offer that as a value that you can you can offer to others. I think about um, great ways to invest in discipline being how can you fine tune your systems and routines to the point that you can explain them to others. You might have, if you're somebody with high discipline, and we'll get to talk to Ryan here in a moment, there might be routines and processes that exist within your world that you don't realize nobody else has. And they might work for you incredibly well. If you can work on explaining those, putting words to those, putting values to those in a way that you can teach other people about it, you offer them a different perspective and you also offer them a, a, an olive branch on how they can work with you. And so giving others a peek into your favorite processes, your most relied upon habits and structures, it opens up those lines of communication and, and creates a great, I think, platform for discussion there. You can help others add order to their lives. Um, and when we think about some of the, uh, the, the needs of followers, we know that followers need from their leaders stability, hope, compassion, and trust. I've got just a couple ideas of, of how people can, um, can provide these. And by the way, if you're using this maybe as a, as a book study or as a book series, most of these um, suggestions or, or nuggets of information around stability, trust, compassion, and hope come from the Strengths-Based Leadership book. So you can, um, I, I nuance them a little bit to make sure that they fit what we're doing, that strategic and communication there with me. Um, but this is a fantastic resource if you haven't picked it up already. There's, um, each theme is categorized into these, uh, these four areas. So a leader with discipline might build trust by leaning into their uncompromising standards, uh, holding yourself accountable at the same sort of high level that you hold others accountable, um, and don't apologize for those high standards. Um, they might also create trust by consistently meeting expectations and reminding folks when they do. Uh, if somebody is trying to adjust your schedule or adjust your process, think about taking a beat listening to what they're saying, and perhaps even reminding them uh, of all of the, uh, the return on investment that you have expected, or the expectations that you have met. A leader with discipline might show compassion by giving words to the value of discipline and offering it to others. Uh, I'm, I'm always nervous about using the word architect as a verb because I'm not sure it's something you can do, <laughs> but I'm gonna use it anyway, because it seemed better than build or plan. Um, but I think people with high discipline can help architect structure for other people. Uh, it's, it's something that I've, I've never met somebody with discipline who wasn't excited about the thought of getting to sort of offer some advice or offer some, some structure consultation to other folks. Um, you might provide stability by sharing your timelines, sharing your processes ahead of time, being really clear about those sort of internal processing and, and procedures that you have. And you might inspire hope by talking about the details of the future. Hope is a belief that tomorrow is going to be better than today and that you have the ability to make it that way. And discipline lives every day crossing T's and dotting I's and noticing and engaging with detail. And I think that would make an incredible paintbrush for talking about the future. If you can talk about tomorrow and talk about the details of tomorrow, just like you can talk about today and your processes, um, I think it's a beautiful extension of, of leadership and discipline into hope. 